Namo Shivaya students. We have already started with the chapter the necklace and in the last video we have seen that Matilda had finally managed to have a new dress for the party as well as she has borrowed a diamond necklace from her friend Madame Foreste. Now let's see what happens next in the party. She fell upon the neck of her friend, embraced her with passion, then went away with her treasure. The day of the ball arrived. Ma'am Loisel was a great success. She was the prettiest of all, elegant, gracious, smiling and full of joy. All the men noticed her, asked her name and wanted to be presented. She danced with enthusiasm, intoxicated with pleasure, thinking of nothing but all this admiration, this victory, so complete and sweet to her heart. She went home towards four o'clock in the morning. Her husband had been half asleep in one of the little salons since midnight, with three other gentlemen whose wives were enjoying themselves very much. He threw around her shoulder the modest wraps they had carried, whose poverty clashed with the elegance of the ball costume. She wished to hurry away in order not to be noticed by the other women who were wrapping themselves in rich furs. Loisel detained her. Wait, said he, I am going to call a cab. But she would not listen and descended the steps rapidly. When they were in the street, they found no carriage and they began to sleep for one, hailing the coachman whom they saw at a distance. They walked along towards the river, hopeless and shivering. Finally, they found one of those old carriages that one sees in Paris after nightfall. It took them as far as their door and they went wearily up to their apartment. It was all over by her, for her. And on this, on his part, he remembered that he would have to be at the office by 10 o'clock. She removed the wraps from her shoulders before the glass for a final view of herself in her glory. Suddenly, she uttered a cry. Her necklace was not around her neck. Lazel, already half undressed, asked, What is the matter? She turned towards him excitedly. I have, I have, I have, I no longer have Mem Forestier's necklace. He arose in dismay. What? How is that? It is not possible. And they looked in the folds of the dress, in the folds of the cloak, in the pockets, everywhere. They could not find it. He asked, You're sure you still had it when we left the minister's house? After receiving the necklace from her friend, Matilda hugged her with affection and left for her house. The day of the party arrived and Ma'am Loisel was appreciated as she was the prettiest, most elegant and gracious of all. She was very happy and full of joy as all the men were noticing her. She was full of enthusiasm and pleasure as she was very happy with all the attention she had gained. The couple left the party at four o'clock in the morning. Ma'am Loisel had already, Mr. Loisel had already slept at 12 o'clock in one of the halls with three other men whose wives were also enjoying the party. Mr. Loisel threw the wrap around her shoulder as they were about to leave. The elegance of the party dress was getting ruined by the wrap as it was not that pretty and was not up to the mark. She wanted to leave the party quickly because she did not want the rich ladies who had wrapped themselves in rich furs to see her in a cheap wrap. This was because she had portrayed herself as a rich lady by wearing the new dress and the diamond necklace. Mr. Loisel asked her to wait as, she, as he was calling a cab but she was in a hurry and quickly went down the stairs. She did not want to be noticed. As they got on the street, they were looking for a carriage which could take them home but could not find one. Then they saw a coachman at a distance and started calling him. The coachman did not stop. They kept walking towards 
together towards the river and finally found a carriage the kind one finds in Paris in dusk time. The carriage took them in their home and they both went up. By then, they were extremely tired. The enthusiasm and the fun for Mrs. Loisel had ended by then. Mr. Loisel also remembered that he had to reach his office by 10 in the morning. As he stood in front of the mirror and removed the wrap to see herself one last time in the beautiful dress and necklace, she cried because the necklace was missing. It was not on her neck. Mr. Lozell was already half undressed by then and was almost ready to go to bed when he asked her the reason for shouting. She turned towards him and said that Madame Forrester's necklace was missing and that it might have fallen somewhere. They searched it in the folds of the dresses, the cloak and in the pockets but could not find it. Mr. Loisel then asked her if she remembered having it on while they were leaving the minister's house. So we, you see that Mad Matilda has already lost Madame Forrester's necklace somewhere. But she doesn't know where she has lost it. And we have already got to know that the necklace was of diamond which they could not afford to have by themselves. So they had to borrow it from her friend, Madame Forrester. So let's see what happens next. Yes, I felt it as we came out. But if you had lost it in the street, we should have heard it fall. It must be in the cab. Yes, it is possible. Did you take the number? No. And you? Did you notice what it was? No. They looked at each other, utterly cast down. Finally, Loisel dressed himself again. I'm going, he said, over the track where we went on foot, foot to see if I can find it. And he went. She remained in her evening gown, not having the force to go to bed. Towards seven o'clock, her husband returned. He had found nothing. He went to the police and to the cab offices and put an advertisement in the newspapers offering a reward. She waited all day in a state of bewilderment before this frightful disaster. Loisel returned in the evening, his face pale. He had discovered nothing. He said, write to your friend that you have broken the clasp of the necklace and that you will have to repair, get it repaired. That will give us time, she wrote as he dictated. At the end of a week, they had lost all hope and Loisel, older by five years, declared, we must replace this jewel. In a shop of the Palace Loyal, they found a chaplet of diamonds, which seemed to them exactly like the one they had lost. It was valued at 40,000 francs. They could get it for 36,000. Loisel possessed 80,000 francs, which his father had left him. He borrowed the rest. He made ruinous promises, took money from user usurers and the whole race of lenders. Then he went to get the new ne necklace, depositing on the merchant's counter 36,000 francs. When Ma'am Loisel took back the jewels to Ma'am Foreste, the late latter said to her in a frigid tone, You should have returned them to me sooner, for I must, might have needed them. Ma'am Loisel said that she remembered having it on as she had felt it while leaving the house of the minister. Mr. Lozell said that if it would have fallen on the street, then they would have heard the sound of it falling. But they did not hear anything which meant that it must have fallen in the camp. To this she replied that it could be possible that what he said was right and asked him if he noted down the number of the cab. Both of them had not seen the number of the carriage. They were let down by what had just happened and Mr. Lozell dressed up again to go 
and look on the tracks where they were walking. She remained at home wearing her evening gown, whereas her husband went out in the search of the necklace. Mr. Lozell returned at around 7 o'clock in the morning and announced that he had found nothing. He also went to the police and cab offices asking about it and gave an advertisement about it in the newspaper, offering a reward for whoever returned it. Ma'am Lozell waited for her husband the whole day and when he returned, he announced that he had not been able to find the necklace. Mr. Loisel told his wife to write to Madame Foreste that they had given the necklace for repairing as the hook of the necklace had broken. After looking for it for almost a week, they decided to buy another necklace for Ma'am Foreste as they were not able to find the original one. Then they started looking for a necklace similar to the one they had lost and found one in a shop at Palais Royal. The price of the necklace was 36,000 francs with a discount of 4,000 francs. Mr. Lawson had about 18,000 francs which were given to him by his father before his death. He borrowed the rest of the money from different money lenders. He then bought the new necklace from the shop by paying the full amount. When Ma'am Loisel took the necklace to her friend, her friend told her that she should have returned it earlier as she too needed it. So you see that they couldn't find the necklace anywhere. So they had to buy a new one which was actually not affordable by them. It costed quite higher than what they could afford. So they had to borrow a lot of money and had to buy the necklace. And when the day came of returning, Madame Foreste asked Matilda that she could have returned it much earlier. So let's see what happens next in Madame Foreste's house. Thank you. Om Namah Shivaya.